This video is all about polyprotic acids, and these are acids that contain multiple ionizable or deprotonatable, removable protons. And so in general, they have a formula like HNX, where this N value is greater than one, indicating more than one proton that can be lost. Polyprotic acids have a particular sort of rhythm to their K values, if, if you will, in a particular way we think about how those protons are lost and a couple of quirks related to how we treat them in equilibrium problems and in finding pH that we'll explore a little bit in this video. We'll also get into polyprotic bases at the end of this section, which are bases with multiple basic sites where mul more than one proton could be accepted, essentially creating a polyprotic acid is one way to think about polyprotic bases. All right, so most of the acids I'd say we've seen to this point are monoprotic. They contain a single ionizable proton, and they're things like HCl and HNO3, where the leading H has a subscript of 1 in the chemical formula. In polyprotic acids, that leading hydrogen has a subscript that is not equal to 1. So, for example, in phosphoric acid, H3PO4, we've got three ionizable protons or removable protons. And in sulfuric acid, we've got two removable protons. Multiple acidic protons, that's the hallmark of a polyprotic acid. And for each proton, we can write a single acid ionization or acid dissociation reaction with water to produce hydronium ion. So for example, for sulfuric acid, we've got H2SO4 reacting with water to produce HSO4 minus and H3O plus. That's a single proton transfer event. One proton has been transferred. Notice we've gone from H2SO4 to HSO4 minus and one molecule of hydronium ion has been produced. Now, sulfuric acid is a strong acid, so the K value here is quite, quite large at greater than 100, and the pK is negative. Sulfuric acid is a strong acid. However, loss of the second proton is not complete. HSO4- minus is not a strong acid, so check out the second acid-base reaction here. HSO4- minus reacts with H2O, not completely but reversibly, to give sulfate and hydronium ion. And here, the second Ka value is quite a bit smaller than Ka1, is actually less than 1, indicating that the acid is weak. So this gives us some insight into how Ka changes for a polyprotic acid as we go from that first deprotonation to the second to the third. It tends to get smaller with each proton lost for reasons that make sense and that we'll explore here shortly. Similarly for carbonic acid, we've got the first reaction. This should actually be a reversible arrow here, right? Not a complete arrow. We'll copy-paste error there. And Ka1 is 4.3 times 10 to the negative 7. Notice that the second deprotonation of HCO3 minus, Ka2 is quite a bit smaller than Ka1, way down at 4.7 times 10 to the negative 11 power. So a couple of things here. We've seen that Ka tends to get much smaller with each proton we lose. And notice the nomenclature associated with Ka. Loss of the first proton, typically from the neutral polyprotic acid with all of its protons intact, is called Ka1. Loss of that second proton is called Ka2. Loss of the third proton is called Ka3, et cetera, et cetera, for polyprotic acids. So on the last slide, we noted Ka values for polyprotic acids are usually very different. This is because loss of a proton changes the molecular structure quite dramatically by essentially decreasing the charge of the molecule by one unit, right? Typically what happens as base is added, because the Ka values are spread so far apart, the first proton is removed entirely before the second proton begins to be removed appreciably. And I want to show you what that looks like on a graph here in a second. So let's consider the ionization states of carbonic acid as a function of pH. Carbonic acid has three important ionization states which are conjugates of each other. On the low end we have H2CO3. As the pH increases, we start to build in the conjugate base HCO3 minus, and as the pH gets even higher, we build in the conjugate base of HCO3 minus, which is CO3 2 minus. 
If we follow the concentration as a function of pH for each of these species, we get a curve that looks like this. And those of you familiar with titration curves, these will start to look quite familiar. A similar curve comes in for HCO3. We reach a point where the two cross each other, the two um, concentrations cross, and this levels out and eventually decays back down to zero, similar to the H2CO3 case. And with CO3 two minus, well, that starts to come in as the pH gets higher. We reach a point where they cross and they're equal, and then CO3 two minus tails off and remains the dominant ionization state for all pHs greater than the end of this graph. Let me actually move this one back a little bit so that the intersection point looks closer to a one-to-one -one type of situation with those two molarities equal in each half of the initial molarity. So a couple of things to notice about this. When the concentration of, let's say, HCO3 is maximal, there's very little H2CO3 and very little CO3 two minus around. But there are these points where we have equal concentrations of the conjugate pair. These are what we'll call buffers in future discussions of um, acid-based solutions. And polyprotic acids have multiple possible buffer systems at the two points highlighted in orange here. The other thing to notice about this is at very high and very low pH values, we've got essentially only the conjugate base, or only the most basic form, CO3 two minus, present, and only the most acidic form at very low pHs. A mathematical representation of this that we'll return to later is this equation right here. The log of the ratio of a base to its conjugate acid is equal to the difference between the pH of the solution and the pKa of the acid. This is known as the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. We'll dig into it more in more detail later on, but it goes to show you that as the pH increases by one unit, this ratio increases by a factor of 10, thanks to the logarithm on the left-hand side. So small changes in pH translate into very large changes in concentration of acids in their conjugate bases.